Ukrayna. 1980 doğumlu, 27 yaşında, 1.88 boyunda 13 karşılaşma yapmış, 11'ini nakavutla kazanmış. Mavi Yeşil'deki boksörümüz Konstantin Aylic, 29 yaşında, 1.86 boyunda 8 maç yapmış, 8'inde nakavutla kazanmış. Boksörlerimize başarılar diliyoruz. Well, if you're just joining us, welcome. This is second day out, and you're live with us with Jalipo, and we are coming to you from Turkey this evening. And uh, this is the heavyweight division we're in now. Yep, yep. And I pronounced his name Olink. I believe that's uh, Olink against uh, Konstantin Erich. From Germany. And Eric is in the red trunks. Fox! So let's see what these two have to offer. Well, both of them fairly flat-footed, uh, just standing off each other, feeling each other out. I'm sure the big bombs will start to come in soon from Eric. I think keeping a very uh, low left hand, not a good idea. Obviously feeling confident. As I think I suggested at the full beginning of this fight, I'm not sure that Olink's in the, the greatest of conditions. <laughs> Eric taking his time here. Normally expect him to be uh, a bit more on his game. <laughs> They're pretty much trading here for blow for blow. Certainly with that low guard, you would think Eric would be looking to uh, for the straight right to land. No defence there at all. That was a good uppercut. Time. It was a fairly even round, I think, but uh, I, I, I think it has to go to to Eric in my book. Uh, hopefully, uh, Eric's uh, corner of notice the low guard by Olink and uh, advising uh, Eric to 
Look for that right hand over the top. Seconds up. Here we go, round two. Stop. Stop. Let's see Stop. whether either of them have worked anything out about each other here. Time. Box. I think I saw Sunil Sam sitting in the audience there. I'm sure he's not overly concerned about either of these two at the moment on this showing. I'd really like to see Eric step this up. Regardless of the opposition, a bit more head movement would be good from Eric. He's uh, standing very square to his opponent. Maybe he feels there's uh, not a great deal to get out of the way of, but you never know. I mean, they're heavyweights at the end of the day, and it's only going to take that one punch. But uh, it'd be nice to see a bit more uh, movement, head movement from Eric. He's... Uh, This is very one place at the moment, and someone needs to put their foot on the gas pedal, that's for sure. Uh, well, again, a very close round there. I think that's fairly even in my book. Right hand there for Oling. He snicked that one in. But uh, as I said, looking at the overall condition of these two, you'd like to think Eric could step it up a bit, put his foot on the gas, and uh, leave this guy behind. But really, these are things that these cornermen should be noticing. They, you mean, the cornermen should always be looking at the opponent to see the weaknesses. Letting their boxer know the faults in the in the other boxer's defence or whatever it might be, his movement, and they should capitalise on that. And at the moment, when you look at the difference in the two physiques here, really you'd expect Eric looking that much better to better step on the gas. Here we go, round three.
That was a good shot to the body. Eric returned the compliment. And surprisingly, Oling is getting the better of this round. The more solid punches, the better punches coming in now from Oling. I think this is part of the problem. I mean, uh, you know, Eric is, uh, for some reason, fighting at Oling's pace, and you would like to think that Eric would better, uh, you know, maintain a, a much higher work rate. But why isn't he doing that? Once you can't believe he's getting drawn into uh, into Oling's fight, and who knows? At close quarters, certainly the those better uh, punches that were just uh, we just saw were coming from Oling. Certainly, I think Oling's better at the inside work as they come uh, close together here. Better work, better punches being unloaded by Oling. But towards the second half of this round, Eric is uh, starting to come through with a little bit more work, a little bit more quality to the punches. Whether that would catch the judges' eyes towards the end of the round, but certainly the first part of that round, uh, I have to say that Olink was the was, was the better man. And on the basis of that, I'm, I'm, I've really now got it uh, pretty much all even. So round four coming up. Let's see whether uh, Eric is going to step it up a little bit here. Second come on. You'd like to hope so. Tuck. Second out, come on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Second out. I think those cornermen need a bit of a ticking off for that display there. That was a. Uh... Whether it was a ploy for a bit extra time for their man, they certainly got it. Rawlings looking a little bit more subdued in this round, I think. 
Eric May uh, tending to walk him down slightly. The pace, what lack there is of it, seems to be getting to him. Sure, Eric's uh, time and accuracy is uh, there tonight. I'm sure he's expected to win this bat. fairly subdued I think in that particular round I really do so whether the pace has been getting to him maybe thought he'd uh, take himself a bit of a breather well, certainly that round uh, would go clearly to Eric Still, even though when you have an opponent like this, um, Eric should still be using that to his advantage, applying his trade, a bit more head movement, lateral movement. It really isn't there, and he's got an ideal opportunity here to... Uh, here we go. This is round five. See if Eric will uh, step on the gas pedal, as I've said, and try and uh, finish this. effects there by the looks of it and I think he certainly recovered well he was up on his feet pretty quick he went down hard but he was uh, certainly up quick
like I was been expecting to see from Eric. I don't know why he's not maintaining that. Maybe it's a bad night at the office for him too. Very little head movement from Eric. He really needs to start moving some lateral movement. I mean, with a better opposition, he's going to be in trouble. Good right hand, straight down the middle from Eric. But, as I said, straight back on his feet. Recovered very quickly from that. And it was a good shot, big shot. That was a better sustained attack there from Eric. Um, really, we should be seeing a great deal more of that because Oling has nothing to answer when he does uh, put up an attack like that. OK, round six. Now, once again, the uh, seconds are taking their time, and I think they really should be... I mean, the boxer could be penalised for this. It's really not acceptable. The strange thing is that Oleg actually has better technique when he's delivering these punches. Strange that may seem, but he certainly does. Um, when he's in close, he has uh, he finds the he finds the gaps and the better angles. But unfortunately, he's he's, he's just not in, in condition. It's laboured and it's very much a, a, a one gear performance. Whereas I'd expect Eric to better step up through the gears as is required. feel that if Eric just stepped into this and upped it the, the pace and sustained one of these assaults, then it would have the desired effect. But for some reason, he, he doesn't seem to wish to do so. And he's coming in very square. No head movement. Caught there on the left hook, falling right. right at the end there. But uh, still clearly Eric's round. Thank you.
Seconds out. Seconds out. Seconds out. Fox. I'd really like to see Eric finish this before uh, we reach the final round. Break. He's proved that he has the power to uh, to affect Oleg. Some uh, fairly uh, punches of desperation coming in there from Oling. He's uh, not even looking at his opponent as he was throwing a few of those. His head's down, he's looking at the canvas, and he's. Uh, I think he's on automatic pilot to some degree. A few clean, crisp shots from uh, Eric may well have the desired effect, but he's really not looking for him. Stop! Box! Holding. Well, it's all to do for Oleg if he really wants to uh, do something here. The only way he's going to get a decision is by a stoppage, and I really don't see that happening. the final round. Time. Fox.
Eric only needs to stay on his feet, that's for sure. Next up after this, another heavyweight, and it's Alanda Solis, unbeaten, and he's against uh, Jakuriksville. I hope I'm pronouncing that one correctly as well. Now, both of these guys are unbeaten, and we've been uh, watching Solis here on seconds out over his last few fights. And I have to say that the Cuban is a very, very skillful, very skillful and hard, hard boxer. So. Uh, I, I think he may well uh, start causing a few eyebrows to be raised within within boxing. And I'm very interested to see who gives. And that should be next up after this bout. So stick with us for that one. Like I think it's going to survive these uh, eight rounds as well. So no big fireworks tonight from Eric. What's your agenda? What's your Shakes at the end. Coming in hard with the head there. He was pulled on that by the referee, and rightly so. That's a clear win for Eric, so he will march on. Here we go, decision time. Think a foregone conclusion. Well, he got his cuddle after all. <laughs> 